let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Welcome, PUBG test server. Welcome, test server. Dan. What is your character, man? What do you I've, mean? I, I don't think I've ever seen your character before. Red shirt. He has like one of those uh, hair colors that you get on a car, where like it's one color from one angle, and then when he leans forward, it's a completely different shade. Uh, back in the '80s, we called that hyper color on the T-shirt you used to blow on. <laughs> Did you guys ever have those, or that's dating myself? I might have actually. I do not know what that. Awesome. Is. Awesome. So it's like picture like a a light colored shirt, and then you would literally like put it up to your mouth and breathe on it, and it would change color. That sounds just unbelievably 80s it's amazing speaking of amazing our boys back from uh champions of fire yeah hello uh, respectable fourth out of 12 dude i'm i'm stoked i set out to be one of the top two in qualifying and uh i managed to sneak into that number two spot no shame in losing to hafu she practiced hard and uh like like dan said she ice in her veins on stage we were a seasoned <laughs> veteran competitor like <laughs> we were talking a little bit off camera i you know i didn't know her from anyone else but you can't help but root for her. just ice water in her veins classy champion even though she didn't champ it out she was acted like one you know dude i gotta be honest so like the first three rounds the minions whatever like nobody knew what happened in that round but was uh, that a timer like did you run yeah out it was based it was based on timer okay. and i forget what i played second i think it was like beach buggy racing and i tanked and then in Crossy, I put down, like, a, a horrible score by my own standards. And I was like, oh, this is horrible, man. But then when I rose from the ashes, started <laughs> knocking out those firsts and seconds nonstop, I was like, this is what it feels like to be LeBron James. <laughs> yeah, like, step up in Flappy Bird, the high score was, like, 70. I've never touched the – they never didn't let us touch the game before. we. It was the first time any of us had ever played it. And just be like, yeah, there's, like, a 90 – I was like, I've ascended. I am a <laughs> next level player. And the 10,000 in Pac-Man was like, no joke, probably among the most fulfilled I've ever felt in my life. <laughs> as as sad as that might seem. No, well, like, I get it because, like, you had a legit audience there. You had people there, like, it's different, like, online versus, like, people there rooting for you. I can't imagine yeah. what that felt like. Like, what was it like when you walked in and you saw the dongers everywhere? <laughs> The doggers was, meaning the stoked. things they, they hit together. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. I was I was stoked that there were so many people there. Like it was it was cool, but also like a little intimidating. But when you open the door on the test server, your hand moves. What do you mean? Like it turns the handy? Well like ah, ah, Where is he? Hey. There's a dude in here with me. Right behind me. I'm behind you. Oh. oh. Wait, what? I'm wait. Is is this server okay? No. No, I'm banning. Very much no. <laughs> very, very much not okay. So Wait. the test server's out. Wait. That's the right, Ryan. Is he second floor? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Is this like old school PUBG where you have to wait for like 20 people to die before the server works? Yes. Wow. That bad. If you're watching my perspective, that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> so? Uh, yeah, no, they, it's funny. So, this is the first time I played on this version of the test server. The last version of the test server, it, it was like this. Like, every time you started a game, the servers were, like, just terrible. Like, it, you would, it would rubber band everywhere. And everyone was like, yo, this sucks. And yeah. then the test servers went down, and they're not, they weren't supposed to come back up until, like, next week. And then they were like... They, they tweeted and they were like, hey, we know there were some server issues. We think we fixed them. Go ahead and test our servers for us again. Uh, and that was yesterday. So, yeah, they didn't fix it at all. Meanwhile, Fortnite. <laughs> you see that? You see the chart of Twitch viewership? No. Head to head like PUBG and Fortnite viewership. They're, they're not quite like head to head, but they're getting there. They're... I'm just waiting for that Fortnite holiday drop, and then it's over. Say goodnight, Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> um, real quick, though, Ryan, when did you, like, first see the audience for the first time? Uh, I My heat was second, so it was, like, 
just after the first day started, I walked out and was like, whoa. <laughs> so I think like it's been long enough that I can at least tell you honestly, the audience in Champions of Fire 1 was about 10 people. Yeah. And I think maybe 11 of them were involved in the creation of the event in some way or another. <laughs> so, like, to, to walk out, and there were probably, like, 80 to 100 people out there. It's wow. hard to tell from on stage, but yeah. And they were, like, they were going wild. But it was a different atmosphere for sure. <laughs> like, Were there any competitors, like, legit real talk now that it's over that you're like, all right, I would prefer not to go against them because I think they're really good? In the tournament? Yeah. Well, I, okay, so, like, in the qualifying rounds, but before I get into this, you guys want to land, like, somewhere not that spicy? In case yeah. We can just wait for, like, the server to kill some people, and then... S someone tweeted me, like, hey, Dan, you need to go to one of these spots. Thank me later. Like, one of these forks in the road. I don't know which one it was, though. <laughs> we could go... <laughs> want to go to this one? Let's go. That's a bit... F yeah, we can, like, try to hump to, like, shelter. It's crazy, but we can try. Just a nice um, slow hump. Like I didn't, none of the rounds were head to head scoring except for Sonic and um, there was one more. I can't remember what it Cooking? is. Cooking. Uh, Sonic, Sonic and Beat Fever were both head to head, mm. and uh, so it does, doesn't really matter who you play in your heats, but it is kind of demoralizing. <laughs> Out of ten heats, I played Hafu twice, and I played Yasuo twice. <laughs> So, I mean, I'm not going to – I did beat Hafu and Sonic under, you know, asteriskable circumstances because Tablet Dude, bless his heart, uh, after a couple of technical malfunctions, just started her as a character she never played before <laughs> in one of the rounds. But anyway, I mean, that's not that big of a deal. But, um, <laughs> and I, I beat Yasuo once in real racing, but, like, you're, you're going up against the cream of the crop. <laughs> I couldn't even remember the other people that weren't on day two. Uh, I know that sounds bad, but it's like you didn't There's see a lot of people. Like, yeah, I, I thought see the way I thought it was seated by what you told me. I thought like, hey, everyone got seated. It's just you got a first round by, but no, they chopped half the field down. Yeah, <laughs> what which is the, good because like the final day still took like eight hours. Yeah. So, what did those people do on the second day? Uh, some of them got a chance to go take a break. Mm -hmm. They were like, hey, like, you five, you can just come back at, like, X time. Mm. Then, like, a couple people, they were like, we want you around to sit on the couch and, like, do a, a segment of banter. Mm. Do they have food and stuff for you? Yeah, it was catered. What was it? What did they have on the tables? First day, I'll level with you, C- minus on the food. What was not, it? Not that amazing. Like, you know, small sandwiches and, you know. They, you know, New York is a, it's a very modern city. So when they brought it out, there were, like, eight chicken sandwiches and then, like, 30 mushroom and 45 tofu sandwiches. And I was like, I, I don't mind mushrooms or tofu, but I'd really like that chicken. When I got out there, it was all gone. But then the, <laughs> remaining, why. the remaining days, they, they brought the heat. I think production was like, this catering is not that good. So they came back and they had, like, you know, warm croissants with ham and cheese on them and, like... Was it some high-quality catering. Yeah, your dude, the host, ate one on stage. The croissants? Yeah. <laughs> oh, they were, they were fantastic. They were delicious. Austin, how much of it did you watch? I just watched most of the segments Ryan was on. I saw you in chat a few times for sure. Yeah. The, uh, I don't know, like, I feel like that whole thing, it, all of its success just rides on the NLSS viewers. I can't say that. Uh, you can't say that, but I can. <laughs> you, you're entitled to your opinion. I can't say that. The only thing, I, the only thing I, I saw, like a, I think it was on the Reddit. It was like an image of Ryan while Ryan was in the tournament. Ten minutes after, you know, did you see the, you know, the one I'm talking about, Austin? Uh, wait, say that again. It was an image, and it said like, all right, here's the number of viewers while Ryan was on. Two, oh yeah, yeah, I did see that. <laughs> like ten minutes after, forty minutes after. And then as Yasuo's You can get crying. in the car in one attempt. This is incredible. But yeah, you know, I'll, I'll say the same thing I said on Twitter. Everybody at the event was working really hard. Everybody was also kind of like, it's a little strange event to have like, <laughs> there's like makeup and, you know, professionals <laughs> micing you up and being like, and you're like, really? For this? And then, yeah. Getting okay. a, you're getting a taste of that less Moonvis life. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it is being apparently 
It's being cut up for CBS. It uh, is. And it, they're last time for they did Champions of Fire, not CBS, CBS Sports. Sorry. Okay. But, uh, they uh, last time they cut it into two two-hour blocks. This is somebody else. That's yeah. me. That's me. Um, this time, they're cutting it into. 10 episodes of something. I don't know if it's Ooh. 10 half hour episodes or something or 10 one hour specials, but that's uh, that's going to be interesting. People this in wild. People in chat were getting on the host because they wore the same outfits. That's why. Because yeah, exactly. They're going to have to like make like two days look like one ish, you know, and that's why you guys wore those. I'm, I must say, you were you were Oreo fitted much better this one. Yeah, they gave me a medium this time, which was nice. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> didn't come together quite as last minute i think which helped <laughs> no yeah it was it was fun to be a part of as as always like it does like and we've been talking about this a lot of people have been saying this but even if it's not this i feel like an nlss tournament of shame whether it was huge or small <laughs> or whatever that was actually like just a big event every year i feel like that would actually be really interesting and people yeah, would I, think, so I, I did see you guys be like It'd be cool if we did Champions of Fire, but just, like, with only NLSS members. And I'm with you. I think that would be hilarious. But I also am, like, Amazon's never going to do that. No, they're <laughs> not. It's, it's no. just going to – it 100% like, promotes us instead of anything that they're doing. So I would, like it, – it's weird because even while we're watching and we're, like, you know, uh, the, the viewer count, you know, it's going up and down. Everybody can see that. But uh, You can see that? Like, Oh, well, I mean, in the backstage, backstage. Yeah. Like, okay. You know, you you could you could access the information is what I mean. Okay. But like, uh, it's it's not even just about that. Like, it's also about TV, and it's about I guess Amazon uses it to like pitch developers on the app store and be like, you know, if if you come to our app store, maybe we could hook something like this up for you, and you know, so it's like we as streamers, we just see the view count go up and down, and we go like, man. 12,000 people, this is like a huge production. But for them, they get they derive a little bit of different value out of it, I guess. Yeah, I could. I, that makes sense to me. It's like it's a... Uh, I still so, think it would be more successful regardless. I don't know, because I... I How I mean, do you I define success? On, you know, yeah, I, I'd sign on to it into a heartbeat, of course. But, like, I just... I think that they would see it more as, like, a... Hey, we're going to, like, pay you... We're essentially going to foot like a few hundred thousand dollar bill just to <laughs> have you guys promote your own stuff here. Let's dick around on stage. Right, but I still think the end result is better than what they're doing now for them. So do they lose anything out on that in the first place? Oh, yeah, I'll save. I'll leave that question for uh, for Daniel. <laughs> so here, the I mean, expert. here's why I think it, it, the, the way something like that would work is you would, ha number one, you'd have to get someone else to organize the entire thing and then have it be loaded with games that people that the developers want um promotion for and that's how you fiscally get it done in my opinion if you really wanted to do it which i think would be fun but i would dude i would be so down for it but you have to get well, someone I, like dmart to like literally do the whole thing because no one none of us are going to yeah. organize it no that's oh, yeah. I, don't, like I, said, I, I, I agree with you i don't think amazon would ever do it but i do think that having something like that would still make people happy or be interesting or be worth it for well also parties. you can you can attack it from a different perspective because you did that uh i forget what it was called what is that thing you just did that was big but it was like kind of sure, homegrown yeah, yeah. yeah but oh that, the mine crack yeah yeah but that's like homegrown right it's not like sponsored by x y or z or that, do you, were there multiple sponsors how they, did that work there's i think they're just directly there are sponsors but i think they're also sponsored by uh the charity itself too mm. Got it. Uh, the charity helps with the event as well, and and the whole the whole space that was there, it was that huge tech space was all like donated right by the tech company. So all the cameras, all the equipment, everything was was donated, and that that like space was like two hundred thousand dollars for the whole thing, <laughs> and that the, and they, they they just gave it out. So that's super generous of them. But yeah, no, I I still agree with you. I mean, on the flip side, though, I mean, I don't know. Is anyone in the group, like, super, super techie? I don't think so. Yeah. That's the thing is that, yeah. that that event, that Minecraft event, is run by Sevidus. And Sevidus is literally a workaholic, does everything, insane man who, like, his whole company is based off of, like, his ridiculous work ethic. 
And I think he's also just a rocket scientist, actually. Mm. So, like, I think he went to school for rocket science. So it, it does take that one crazy guy who's really, really a hardworking individual to make something like that work. I don't think well, we I mean, and the other thing is, if people want, like, even close to the same level of production value, which I think is part of what gives Champions of Fire its unique yeah. charm, then you you do need, like, I, there were, like, at least 10 people we interacted with daily. Not even talking about, like, cameramen that we never saw and stuff like that. Like Camera PAs operators. and stuff like that. Know, I'm sure yeah, they had yeah. a whole production company. Like, yeah, people Amazon. that would be like, they got the oh, money uh, for that. people would walk out and be like, oh, which one of you is Northern Lion? And you're like, yeah, hey, that's me. And they're like, <laughs> yeah, and, you know. I don't know who any of you are, and that's okay. Um, let's go. Oh, you guys go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah we don't have a car for you. Shit. I'll just run to the circle. Wait, is there a bike um, right there? Is a bush? It's a bush. Scratch it. So, like, that's why I, I keep trying to emphasize. Like, yeah, I know that there's ups and downs in terms of the quality on stream. To get the ups and downs took, like, <laughs> it takes a village is what I'm trying to say. What? Like, it was, it was an outrageous, and it, we were always trying to, like, I was talking to the, like, the people miking us up and stuff like that and being like, hey, I hope things are going well for you. I get it. Our, we're, we're here and we're all like, you know, you're a little hungry. You got long days, but you're going, you know, our job's easy. We're only working for like, you know, 25% of it. People that are like doing the camera operation or even like the hosts. I, I know like people give the hosts a hard time. They're on stage 12 hours a day. Like during the times <laughs> when the cameras were off, they would just close their eyes and like try to catch a micro sleep or something like that. Yo, can I ask you something real quick? Was there any part of you that, I mean, I know it kind of grew into a meme. Was there any part of you that thought about telling Ali before, like, hey, people call me NL or Ryan, but not <laughs> Northern? No, I think, like, the, the Northern thing is, like, funny now. Yeah. I, didn't get, I didn't get a great chance to, like, answer it, but I was, I did have, like, a, a line stored up that was, like, you know, when I'm at home, I'm Northern Lion, but when I step onto that stage, I become Northern. <laughs> like I was ready to to drop something like that on them, but um, did, the time wasn't right. Real, real quick for us, and I guess what I'd say is I think what a fair barometer would be for like a homegrown event, which I think is doable. So if you ever see It Me JP's like home D and D shows mm. when he has uh, Sir Scoots come in and like produce the whole thing, I oh, think buggy Dan. Uh, I think that could be like a. Okay. Well produced. I'm gonna event. get sharked. I did not get sharked. Have you ever seen one of those, Austin? Yo, yo, we're gonna be in such serious trouble in like two seconds, you madman. Why? These go they're gonna stop and shoot us. We got no cover. They just got out. They just got out. Um, I'm covering, yes. I just. Ooh. Oh! Was that you or me, Austin? That was me. Is that you shooting still? Yeah. I'm being shot at now, though. Are you in the blue? No. I'm not. Oh, let's go! Where is he, Dan? Uh, he is 245. Use your new Skyrim odometer on top. Tells you the exact number. 240 of me. Oh, yeah. I see him. Buggy boys. They're coming for you, Dango. You got a number on him? I'm in trouble. Well, they're fighting each other? Holy shit. You got him, you got him. I mean, no, there's more, though. Uh, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but we got a long way to go, boys. We could... Want me to steal this guy's U.S.? I think that, that, that may be the play. Ah. Oh, yeah, he's... He's in trouble back there. I'm, I'm dead. Yeah, he's. He I didn't think point. they were just sitting there, man. Ryan, what do you think about Mr. Steal your U.S.? Well, you, you could you could take the U.S. if you want. It's fine by me. What are you gonna do? Well, you you're gonna pick me up, right? So I yeah. get in the passenger seat. You're gonna drive me somewhere. Yo, Austin, you got? Do you get a little bloodthirsty there? I, I I thought they would be trying to. I don't know. I I didn't assess the situation properly. I haven't played this game in like over a week. Yeah, I'm I, feeling a little shaky as well. I heard you gave it up because until the new test, until the new patch is out, is that yeah, true? Yeah, the live server is just not fun to play anymore. It's 
too too buggy. Just the frames are still really bad. Not like this. This is butter. Oh yeah, this is still really good. But the, the rubber banding is still a huge problem. Uh, hey, do you have it? What's what's going on with this? Where situation? are you at? I was where we were <laughs> when we got in the fire. Where are you at? I got the U.S. I'm in the red now. I don't see you. You uh, see your right. Man. Okay. There he is. All right. Ryan, oh, you haven't heard the bombs yet, Ryan. It's World War II. Oh, you have? I have. They, they whistle, yeah. It's so good. All right. Let's not blow up. Yo, oh, yeah, spectator more. audio is reversed in this version. Will you give me a mark here, Northern? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to cross. Drive to uh, drive to Orange. We're going to cross that bridge. Okay. Yo, how was Kate during the event? Was she, like, tense? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> even when I got knocked out and I was watching people compete, I think it's much worse to be watching than it is to <laughs> compete because when you're up on stage, you're like, you know, I have control of my own destiny. Uh, and you're, you know, in Crossy Road especially, you're like, I see that car. Like, I, I'm, I, make the, I make the plays I make knowing the situation, but on stage, you're like, or when you're watching people, you're like, oh, my God, look out. <laughs> they don't see it. <laughs> Yo, I'll tell you what the game looked the coolest or most, like, I guess, interesting to me was I, that I piano game. Piano game? Oh, yeah. uh, dancing lines? Yeah, is that with, like, the – it goes to the music. Yeah, yeah. Every, that's, everybody we talked to was like, yo, dancing lines look really cool. <laughs> it is. It's also by far the most frustrating game in the whole pack because when you lose, you start from zero. <laughs> and then if you ever make a mistake, you know, you're just done. And you might not see it on screen, but the game, like, lies to you. What do you mean? Like, like usually it goes like to the melody. Every time there's a beat in the melody, you like press a button. Mm -hmm. but sometimes they they deliberately skip them, or they'll like <laughs> throw things onto the screen to make you think that you have to turn, but you actually have to go straight. And speaking of, you want to turn in here? Uh, just go orange. Oh! Yeah. Okay. Sure. Let's let's do this. Why? Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> I saw closed doors. Why would you... I saw closed doors. Win length. Win length. That's my bad. <laughs> You're just too trusting. Did you, you see, see any open doors? I did. No, but that doesn't oh. mean there's not. It's like a high tier <laughs> spot. <laughs> Lesson learned. Lesson you got, learned. If, if you're getting like 30 people left, you get you're down to the dregs. <laughs> you're not like let's go check quarry. <laughs> Oh. I do want to reiterate, though, because I feel like I, it's kind of rude to say what I've been saying about this event. Like, oh, if it was the NLSS, it would be so much better. It's kind of rude to the other contestants. But, like, what I mean by that is, like, these are a bunch of questionable games. They're not the most fun games right, in the world. Let's be rude to the devs now instead. Yeah, of course. But <laughs> the NLSS literally, like, thrives on playing silly games yeah. that don't have a lot of value to them. Like it's it's what makes the NLSS the NLSS sometimes. I'll tell you what, people were like, people that were unaware of me were very curious of how I got this much support for this event, and I, <laughs> having to explain to people what the NLSS is without being like, yeah, we talk about cum like a lot, <laughs> was delicate operation. I'd be like, yeah, we run. It. It's like people are like, so dude, we're like, what kind of content do you stream? Like, are you you play like battlegrounds or strategy games or stuff? And I'm like, we kind of just like play whatever. And it's more of like it's meant to be kind of like a talk show sort of thing, but it, it's it's got a vibe that's hard to get across. Uh, I think in in like thirty seconds, it's like a podcast with games in the background. That's that's a I'd say that's your elevator pitch, or yeah. it's a variety sh like I don't even know like it's like Johnny Carson. Yeah, I day. agree. Yeah, it's not like Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon's a little bit <laughs> Johnny Carson. You got Andy Kaufman, you got Jim Carrey. Did you watch the uh, the Andy Kaufman, Jim Carrey documentary? Dude, <laughs> Jim Carrey has ascended. What did you think of it? Austin, have you seen it or no? I haven't seen you it. You got to watch yeah, I, it. I, I thought the documentary was really cool. I thought I, it was good. Had you seen Man on the Moon before? Yes, I have, yeah. Okay, what did you like about the documentary? Uh, I, I liked a lot of it. I liked how... I, I respect Jim Carrey for uh, completely like immersing himself in the character, and I also love that everybody else on set was not having it at all. <laughs> everybody else was just like rolling their eyes. 
It's well, you, like uh, it's like a documentary of the making of that movie, The Room. If The Room had actually turned out like pretty well, we give people an acquiescence like as to what the documentary is about and what Jim Carrey did, so people understand, and they're not like, "Uh, T A E." <laughs> this is actually so spicy. T A E. What is T A? Um, teach anybody anything. T A A. T A A. The transportation. Authority Association. Um, so anyway, uh, Andy Kaufman was a kind of like absurd, surreal comedian from like the 1970s and 80s who uh, part of his thing was making the audience uncomfortable. You never knew like what was serious and what was part of the bit. And then uh, they made this is going to be bad. And then they made a, a movie about Andy Kaufman after he died called Man on the Moon starring Jim Carrey as Andy Kaufman. And then just now they released a documentary about the making of Man on the Moon uh, with, oh, I'm dead, with behind the scenes footage of the production of the film. And Jim Carrey is a method actor, like never Jim breaking Carrey, character. Yeah, 100% stays in character like the whole film. Maybe not 100%. Okay, I'm, a, I'm 100% about to die. Don't die because I got an 8x for, for some. Oh, okay, I'll just... Uh, Defeat him with my fists versus his shotgun. I'm getting crossbowed. There we go. Why didn't you just run? Who do you? I mean, I ran. <laughs> why didn't? Why didn't you just run when you got killed last round, Austin? Why didn't you just run, Ryan? This is this is the last PUBG episode I'm recording. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Come back, get grilled about Champions of Fire. Then Uber eats me straight to my coffin. <laughs> I get shot. Austin's like, why don't you just not get shot? Wow, I had a guy dead to rights, except no ballots in the chamber. Oh, you trash bucket. So anyway, so I enjoyed it too from like a method acting perspective. But you want to know what I took away from it, not to get too deep? What Jim Carrey said at the end. Fuck. Sorry, I wasn't listening. Fuck! I had to turn on my AC. I said I enjoyed like the method acted like the looking behind the curtains, but I most enjoyed what Jim Carrey said at the end. What did he say at the end? He said, here's a dude literally. Hold on. Someone's up here. Had everything in the world. Money, fast cars, Yeezys. Gratata, let's go. <laughs> but my dude was like literally miserable, you know? Yeah. And I think that was like, and you could see in his face, like he clearly he's, you know, on another level, but like, you know, he's not BSing you. I just think it's, it's, it's good. It was a little touching to me and I don't get that kind of way during movies, you know? I feel you. Like I did come away with a little bit more respect for Jim Carrey. I do think that he is like out of his mind. <laughs> <laughs> what gave you that impression? <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah, definitely. After I watched it, I was like, I, "He's like a sen He's more sensitive in than people give him credit for." I think. You gonna take these boys out, man? How? <laughs> How did that miss? Man, a bit of a pickle here. Welcome to my show. Is this going to pay off or not going to pay off? Probably I'm going to say pay off. See, now here's the thing, Austin. Because we're playing Furpy, there's none of this tomfoolery. They got to come down the alleyway. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to say, Ryan, since you've been gone and through the acquiescence of Austin. What? <laughs> Oh. Take him out. Let's go. Um, through the acquiescence of Austin, yeah. Furpy's growing on me. It really yeah, is. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Not that I'm. I would never turn my back on Thurpy, but I've a. I hear him out here. <laughs> oh, oh, nice shot. Nice shot. He took his boy. That's all that matters. <laughs> well, thanks for watching our warm up round. <laughs> If you enjoyed the episode, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe to see more of the future. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Yeah.